Rural Development and Land Reform Minister Maiteng Kwana Mashabani says there is no list of properties targeted for expropriation without compensation. In a moment, we speak to Afri Forum. The rand fights back after emerging markets take a hammering. We'll speak to an economist of what to expect for the rest of the week. And we get some analysis on today's constitutional court decision removing Sean Abrahams as a prosecution's boss. It's just gone six o'clock. It's great to have you with us on Newsnight. I'm Kathy Mutlatlana. This leads our bulletin this hour. According to AfriForum, there's a list of farms of properties that are targeted for expropriation without compensation. It's now urging landowners to check that list on its website that allegedly contains the, contains the names of these 190 farms. However, the Land Reform Minister, Maite Nguana Mashabani, saying earlier that no such list exists. Well, to explore this further, Vuyom Voko is standing by with the CEO of AFRI Forum, Ernest Roots. Vuyo. Thanks, Kathy. Good evening, Alan. Thanks very much uh, for coming through. Well, do you even believe that this list is authentic? This list is certainly authentic. Uh, the question is what the status of the list is. We How do you know that? We know it's authentic because we, we have re received it through a credible source. We do know for a fact that this list is being circulated within the Department of Land Reform. That is what we know. We do not know if that is the final list of whether the, a decision has been taken regarding this list, but we do know that the minister herself has said that the properties have already been identified, and we do know that this list is being circulated. And that is enough for us to, to inform the public of this and to ask them, to encourage them to prepare should it be necessary to take legal action. Well, she says there's no such a list. Let's listen to her uh, speaking to us earlier. We do no land grab. If we are to appropriate, we will do it in line with the just and equitable, which is that which we, uh, 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 strength that we should use, utilize now, which is per restitution mandate that the department has. So the rumors that we are jumping up and down and we want to even do things that have not been concluded, which are being taken care of by the public hearings, it's false. Someone's lying. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's on record. Um, she's, the, the Department of Land Reform has been flip-flopping so many times on this. So. The very same minister that we just heard speaking now has said recently, a few months ago, that they have already identified the farms, that they are not going to wait for the constitution to be changed, they don't have the patience to do that, that they are going to do this. They are going to expropriate those properties, they know which properties. She even went further then, she said that they don't want the list to be made public because they don't want the owners of these properties to know because, she, according to the minister, they don't want the owners of these properties to start preparing uh, a legal case. Then after that, we heard the department say they do have a list and they, they don't want to make it public yet because they want to inform the, the landowners first, which we know didn't happen. Nobody was informed, at least not on an official level. Now they say there's never been a list in the first place. So if you want to flip-flop, you at least need to do it more subtly. It's, it's clearly a, a oh, problem. Well, flip-flopping is one thing, but uh, 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 lying is quite another. Yeah, well, I would agree. Uh, the minister has to choose. She said she's on record at a press conference where she said they have identified the farms that they want to expropriate without compensation and they do not want the owners of those properties to know. She has said that on record. Today she's saying the exact opposite. So she has to, make, she has to decide what her view is. From what you have been told, who then compiled the list? We don't know who compiled the list. Uh, we do know that it is being circulated within the department. It seems, looking at the list, that it has been compiled by different people. If you look at the way in which uh, information from different provinces have been put together, it seems like a committee or a team has been working on this and that it is being circulated. Um, it might be a discussion document, it might be a proposal, it might be a memorandum, that we don't know. But I mean, what criteria was used to arrive at the farms you're saying yeah. have already been identified? That is something that we are trying to determine. That is why we are contacting these people. Uh, we have been making phone calls the entire day. We've spoken with many of the people whose properties are on that list. But isn't that, I mean, shouldn't that have been part of your verification exercise to, I mean, for you to 
someone can come up with a list, give it to you. It doesn't necessarily mean that the list comes from the, pe the people they say it comes from. So I'm saying as part of your verification exercise, shouldn't you have said uh, who actually compiled this list? Yeah. What informed? What was the criteria used to select these particular properties and so on? Yes. Well, I, I think you in the media would know that sometimes it's very important to protect your sources. I can say to you unequivocally that this list is being distributed in the department. That I can tell you with no doubt. The to listed who? Within the department among different people. Uh, we, uh, we, need to, we need to protect the source as well in this. So it is being circulated. I have no doubt about that. The question, as I said, is the status of the list, and we are trying to find out what the, the rationality was for choosing those people. We, we have never said that those properties would be expropriated. We have said that those properties have been identified, and that, that is something else. You see, I mean, that is what is the problem. It's, it's the credit. My, my question goes to the heart of the credibility test that your report should have gone through. It's, it's, not, it's one thing, and I'm not going to argue with you on the protection um, of sources, mm -hmm. but you need to go the extra mile to ensure that uh, it does pass the truth and other tests. And you, you haven't given me one single reason to believe that um, that report is credible. Well, report is credible. I'm, I'm not going to disclose our sources. I'm not saying disclose, I'm, but I'm saying I'm, I'm what, not going to what, disclose, what verification exercise. I'm not going to disclose the method in which this list was obtained. That's what we cannot disclose. What I can say to you, and you don't need to believe me, and the viewers don't need to believe me if they don't want to, I can say to you with confidence, this list is being circulated within the Department of Land Reform. Again, we don't know what the status of this document is. And then added to that, you can consider the fact that the minister herself has acknowledged earlier that they have identified the properties. Today, she's saying that they haven't identified anything. She's on record having said that they have identified the properties and they don't want people to know. Now there's a list and now she's denying it. So it might, it might, the most logical explanation is they don't want people to know that's why they are denying the existence of a list. Because she herself has said that they don't want people to know because they don't want people to prepare for a legal challenge. And uh, so we need to break this, this veil of secrecy. That's the challenge. Well, I mean, you don't think this is just another, uh, what, what shall one call it, like swartgefaar, you know, to say someone is cooking up something in some corner, be very careful, be worried, uh, concerned, and you don't think this is being alarmist? Well, we should, we should be very concerned because there's an, uh, there's an assault on private property in South Africa. It's, it's, it's um, convenient. Every time you, you criticize government of something, you get said, oh, this is just swartgefaar. Uh, but there's a, but there's a, there's, a, there's a process that Parliament has started, which is open, where everybody uh, um, gets to speak, state their views freely and openly. No one has been victimized or harassed or beaten up, and that process is there. Shouldn't we wait for that? You know, and 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 maybe not. I mean. Would you accept responsibility for whipping people's emotions about something that may not even exist for that matter? Well, I, I think if we want to talk about whipping up people's emotions, once again, the fact that a minister of land reform says we, ha we know whose property we're going to expropri expropriate, but we don't want them to know. That's what she said. It's on record. Yes, there has been a process, and the process is still being followed, although we have stated many concerns about the validity of, of, of the procedures that's been followed with the process, and we can discuss that. But we also know that the vast majority of people who participated in that process, it was in the Sunday papers now, is again, said that they don't want expropriation without compensation. The vast, vast majority of people said that. Um, so then again, we should ask the question, what's really going on? Why is government pushing this when all the opinion surveys indicate that the majority of people don't want this and the, the process that has been followed again has indicated that the majority of people don't want this to happen? Well, the hearings I have been watching uh, actually told me quite the opposite. But anyway, you are urging landowners to check the list on your website um, and then like, to what end? To achieve yeah. what? Well, well, firstly, you don't need, only need to watch the hearings, you need to look at the, the written submissions as well. And there were half a million of those submissions. Um, so the point now is people have been contacting us by the dozens. We are calling every single one of them. Uh, we've ma been making phone calls the entire day. We will get extra staff tomorrow to make sure that everyone who contacted us about this list has certainty about where we stand about the status of this document so that we, can, we will be meeting with our legal team tomorrow. Uh, and based on the information that we can gather about this list and about the position of the department, that will determine how we, how we move forward and how we prepare, if necessary, to does, take some form of legal action. Does that mean, well, the, that was going to my question, whether you're preparing I mean, for a court challenge? 
I, I think it's too early to say that as a fact that yes, we will, um, because that, as I said, that depends on the information that has been gathered today, we, and uh, we haven't spoken with everybody yet. I think, uh, I think the more appropriate route would be to wait to see what happens, uh, to see what's the next step from the department. They've denied everything now, but they, will, they can't just deny everything forever. They, if they just keep denying everything, then there's no point in, in, in having any, any uh, legal process, because then there's not going to be expropriation. So it depends on the next step. The, the oh, but then why don't you go on the strength of your document, which you're saying is very authentic? I mean, that's all you need. You don't need someone's denial. Well, we... The, if you're so sure about... No, we are sure the about the document. Of your report. The point is that, that, that we need to protect people's property rights. And if government says, no, no, we're not going to do, do anything about their property, then so be it. Uh, we know that's not the case. We know... At least, un unless, well, unless everything is in the recycle bin all of a sudden, because they, what the department has been saying today is the exact opposite to what they've been saying all along. So depending on their next move, that will depend uh, the, the appropriate way in terms of legal action. Are you already setting aside some funds with the possibility of mounting that court challenge? Yes, we have a, well, Afroform, we are funded by our members and we have a legal fund. Um, so the point of this, that's why we've been encouraging people not to try to address this on an individual basis, to, to approach this holistically, so that every individual doesn't try to, to, to take on the state as an individual, but rather to get these people to stand together as a group. And this is no ploy to try and actually um, raise more money on the basis that there is this coming. Well, we, we all, we've always encouraged people to join AfriForum. Uh, we've always done that since the beginning. Uh, because we are a civil rights organization, we don't have any, we're an NGO, we don't get any funding from government, we get funding from members of the public. So in everything we do, we, we encourage people to join the organization if they agree with what we are doing. If they d disagree, then they, they don't have any reason to join. Adam Ross, thanks very much for coming through. Thank you very much. He is, of course.